Hi there. In the next few minutes, I'm going to walk you through how 8Base can be used for both its front end and back end solution to build web applications. Let's check it out. The first thing I'll do is go ahead and log into my 8Base console, which I can access through 8Base.com. Here, I can create new back end or front end workspaces. Let's jump into an existing workspace I have called Health Portal Backend. Inside of this workspace, I can shoot over to the Data tab to easily customize my data model. For example, adding a new field to this table, like name, which I'm going to set as a text field and create that while 8Base handles all the DB admin work for me. Next, by managing my data model inside of 8Base, 8Base is able to reverse engineer the GraphQL API needed for all the create, read, update, and delete operations allowing me full data management access programmatically to my backend immediately. This API also extends all the way subscriptions, which are WebSocket connections over AWS Lambda, enabling real-time data applications, as well as auto documentation, so that if I need to explore my API, I can do so with any search term. While the API is auto-generated, role-based access controls are not. However, they are built straight into ABASE natively, allowing you to jump in, create new roles, as well as permission both at a table level, an operation level, and even a field level, what users or any client device can execute when querying the API. You also have the ability of storing sensitive keys in the backend if you need to, as well as generating API tokens. Meanwhile, 8Base backend is fully extensible using JavaScript or TypeScript. Now that we took a quick look at the 8Base backend, let's jump back into Developer Home and look at the 8Base frontend. I'm going to open my frontend workspaces and go to the Health Portal frontend project that I created. Now that my front is loaded, there's a few different things that I can do using the 8Base App Builder. Here in App Builder, I can drag and drop components from the component library to build my UI. For example, like adding this button to these cards, which will render out each template. Every component that I add to my app has three areas of configuration. Properties, which is essentially the data of a component, and supports handlebars expressions. Next are styles, which gives me a form-based approach to styling my component at the instance level, as well as using custom CSS at the, com at the component level if I'd like to. And events, which allow me to add event listeners to my components for anything from click events to mouse overs, and it lets me associate an action with those, such as navigating, running requests, or custom code. App Builder will let me create multiple pages in my application, any which use path parameters that are dynamic, as well as navigation events to add logic to different, the different points in the routing lifecycle. Additionally, there's a strong concept of state management inside of App Builder, allowing data to get stored in state and accessed from components and different resources. For example, the data that's rendering out the list here is being queried from a backend and stored in state management, giving me access to the data property, which I can then template out in my components. Additionally, the page that you're working on can be looked at in a hierarchical view or in a what you see is what you get editor, which is the page canvas. Meanwhile, App Builder allows you to connect to any REST API or GraphQL API, or more conveniently, to an A-based backend, like I did with my Health Portal backend here. From that resource, you can then write requests that get sent to that API client, such as the data dashboard query, which I wrote to get the data that's currently being templated. Whenever a query is run, it gets stored in state management so that data becomes available. Additionally, if you want to use JavaScript in App Builder, you can by writing JavaScript functions, which are essentially functions that become reusable throughout your application. For example, that sum transactions function I just wrote is currently being used to create an aggregate total inside this text component by passing it data from the data dashboard query. All components in App Builder are based on Material UI, and we are working hard on enabling future design frameworks to also be available with their associated component sets. However, with Material UI, App Builder lets you dive in and change the colors as well as the typography settings of the underlying design framework. Additionally, if you want to go in and overwrite that design framework, you can by adding global custom CSS at the global level or at the component level, affecting the default look and feel components when they are first dragged and dropped onto the screen. App Builder also lets you import fonts from Google Font or upload your own custom font files, as well as manage breakpoints in your application, which have associated media queries 
which you can specify custom CSS, which will be applied when those breakpoints are hit. While there's much more to check out, the last thing that I'd like to show you is deployment. Essentially, inside of 8Base, once you have an application that you're ready to deploy and make it publicly available to your users, you can go ahead and click the deploy button, give it a custom version, and 8Base will handle the full deployment and make your app available over the web. Thank you for watching, and I hope that this video helped you understand what's possible when developing with 8Base backend and app builder.